Joining me now from New York is Omar Rahman, a fellow with the Middle East Council of Global Affairs. Omar, good to have you on the program. I'd like to get your take on Biden's speech earlier this evening. He spoke a lot about upholding the democratic values espoused by the United States. Yes, he spoke about that. And I think what he was trying to do with this speech is make the case to the American people about why they should support his policies, both uh, in Ukraine uh, and Israel currently, and get support uh, from the American people for a massive aid package uh, on the U.S. taxpayer. I mean, again, $100 billion, 14 to go to Israel. While it's prosecuting, you know, a war against, uh, you know, civilians in, in, in the Gaza Strip, killing thousands. Uh, and so, you know, he's trying to get so support for that endeavor by kind of painting this picture, uh, you know, of, of this evil uh, Hamas that must be obliterated, um, you know, without any of the context uh, and without any really mention of the civilians that are dying, Palestinian civilians who are dying there. And of course, when he was talking about Hamas, he was talking about them very much in the same way that Israel has been speaking about uh, the group, uh, saying that they slaughtered uh, over 1,300 Israelis. And when Israel hears that type of talk from an ally like the United States, does it embolden Netanyahu to continue this onslaught on the people of Gaza because of the unwavering support from allies like the U.S. and the U.K.? I think it certainly does. I mean, from the very beginning, uh, the U.S. and allies in Europe of Israel uh, have been both parroting its its you know f uh, unverified claims about uh, certain atrocities that were happened, you know, beheading of babies, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's it's parroting its claims around the bombing of the hospital, uh, and you know, a, and giving it the kind of moral support that it can, and the green light, the kind of blanket support in which it feels emboldened to do whatever it wants. You know, I'm not sure uh, how restrained Israel would feel regardless, but uh, nonetheless, you know, when when the, its primary backers in the West are saying, do what you have to do here, uh, and for many days we're saying, do what you have to do with irrespective of international law, I think at this point saying, oh, oh respect international law, uh, I mean, and even then it was, it was barely a warning. I mean, he said he discussed the, the need to follow international law with Netanyahu. That doesn't mean Netanyahu is going to follow international law. He hasn't followed it so far, uh, and he's prosecuted this war, committing numerous war crimes. Where does this then leave the people of Gaza and the other Palestinian territories? Who in the world is strong enough in <clears throat> terms of uh, political will and international diplomacy to stand up for them? Unfortunately, the Palestinians have been left uh, on their own here. Uh, nobody is really standing up for them. Uh, there are people that are sympathetic in the international community. There are states that are sympathetic. Uh, but nobody has the ability to stand up uh, either to Israel or its backers in the West, primarily the United States of America, uh, you know, who's sending warships into the eastern Mediterranean uh, to deter anybody from involving themselves. Uh, but even at a diplomatic level, you know, Israel does not want to hear uh, any calls for restraint. It doesn't want to hear calls for mediation calls for a ceasefire and wants to prosecute this uh, onslaught of the Gaza Strip uh, to, you know, an end that many are calling are is genocidal in its intent. Uh, and that is extremely scary, especially when the Palestinians have no real ability to defend themselves uh, and nobody willing to come to their aid. Very sad situation for those people suffering that in Gaza. Omar Rahman, live to us there from New York. Thank you so much for your analysis.